Okay, so we are going to do a fractions review today. Um, fractions was from chapter six, which was a while ago, and we just want to make sure that we are still remembering and understanding all the different things that we learned for fractions. So before we get started, let's just, I want you to think in your brain, what are all the different things that we learned this year in chapter six when we were talking about fractions? There were some big um, topics that we learned about. Um, some big things that we did learn were we obviously did adding and subtracting fractions. We did this with like fractions, meaning the numbers or the fractions had the same denominator. And then we also did this with unlike fractions, where we had um, fractions we were adding or subtracting that had different denominators. And we had to find like denominators and then add them. We also did, um, we worked on equivalent fractions. We also worked on simplifying. We also spent a lot of time worrying about um, mixed numbers, mixed fractions, and I'm going to say mixed and improper, and kind of going back and forth between the two. And if we have a mixed number, how do we make that an improper fraction? If we have an improper fraction, how do we make that into a mixed number? We also did some word problems, and we also did a little bit of um, fractions of a set which we will review today as well. So there's some lots of topics, and while you're watching this video, if I were you, I would think about while you're solving the problems, what are things you feel really confident about, and what are some things that you need a little bit of practice, and then at the end, maybe pick two things that you need um, to work on. So our goals for today are we're just gonna do a couple review problems. You're gonna stop and pause the video try to solve it and then press play to check and see if you got the answers right. And again, you're keeping track of how you're doing. What are you confused about? What do you need to practice? Are there anything that you feel really confident about? And then um, afterwards, we're going to pick some things to practice. So we're going to start with equivalent fractions. So again, if we're thinking about root words in equivalent, the root that we're going to focus on is the word equal and equivalent. Um, if I'm having equal fractions, that basically means I'm finding two fractions that are the same amount. They're written differently, but they have the same amount. So if I can give you an example, if I have a pizza, and this is cut and there's one piece out of two colored in, that's one half, or I can take the same amount of pizza and instead of cutting it and leaving it cut into one half, I can make another slice, and then I have one, two slices out of one, two, three, four. Again, these are, you read these differently, they're cut differently, one half and two fourths, but they still are equivalent because they have the same amount of pizza eaten or the same amount um, that would be a part of that whole. So they're both parts of a whole, written differently or expressed differently, but they cover the same amount. So that's what A, an equivalent fraction is. We always find equivalent fractions, especially when we have to add unlike or subtract unlike fractions. That's what we do is we find, um, and try to make them equivalent so that we can we can add or subtract them if the fractions are unlike. So here I have, which says which number correctly replaces the letter to show a pair, and it says A over eight. Sometimes we see letters and we get really confused. They're basically asking what number would I put in the numerator over eight so that it equals 14 sixteenths. Now again, all you have to do is look at the relationship between the first fraction and the second fraction. If I have eights and the other one's cut into sixteenths, what did I have to do to the 8 to make it a 16? Hopefully we're seeing that I had to multiply the 8 by 2 to get to 16. So then to make an equivalent fraction, we have to do the same thing to the numerator to make it be equal to the other fraction. So if I have the denominator times 2, this question mark, I would do times 2 to get to 14. So in my head I'm thinking, well, what times 2 gets me to 14? Hopefully we're realizing that that would be 7. So then I know in this scenario that A would equal 7 because 7 eighths and 14 sixteenths, although written differently, are equal and cover the same amount. They are equivalent fractions. Um, I want you to pause the video and try this one and then press play when you're ready. It says, which of the following is equivalent or equal to 1 sixth? So then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see which of these is the same as 1 sixth. Now you could always try to draw, but sometimes when we draw we're not as precise as we can be and things get a little bit confusing. Um, so again, if I'm thinking four eighths and one sixth, six are harder to draw, eights are pretty easy, but drawing's not always the best strategy. When in doubt, go for it. But I'm gonna look and just think about my number sense and what I know about fractions. So again, I know that if I have a four and I'm trying to get to a one, I know I could do four divided by four and that would get me one, but let's think. If I go to eight and I wanna get to a six, 
I can't do that. I can't eight divided by four is not six. These two don't match up. If I were gonna even just draw a picture just to check, that's fourths. So this is one, two, there's four eighths. And if I have six, one six. Again, those do not match up. They are not equal. This one is way bigger than this one. So again, A is incorrect. Let's try B it says four twelfths and equals one six. Let's think again. If I'm going to a 12 and I want to make it a 6, I'm knowing that I have to divide the 12 by 2 to get to a 6. So again, if I'm making an equivalent fraction, whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. 4 divided by 2 is not 1. And again, if I were going to um, just think about these the way that they work, if I have 4 12ths, I, if I'm taking, if I wanted to find an equivalent fraction and I wanted 4 12ths to become 6, I could divide that by two and get six, but I would have to do four divided by two would be two. So the actual equivalent fraction will be two six, not one six. All right, let's try C, two twelfths and one six. Let's try this one again. If I'm going from a 12 to a six, I've already established that 12 divided by two gets me to six, and let's check. It's two divided by two, one. This one does work. I'm gonna put a maybe here because I'm gonna check D. This one says two eighths to six. Well, again, I can't, there's nothing I can do to an eight to divide it by to get to be a six. So this one just doesn't work because they don't align. So those would not be equivalent. So the only one that matches up is two twelfths and one six. So I want you to think in your head if you're feeling really confident about equivalent fractions or not. And if you are not, maybe on Study Island you can do the equivalent fractions on ribbon two practice. All right, comparing fractions, I think is an area where we sometimes struggle with. So sometimes I think we just like to draw pictures or we just think we know which one's bigger or smaller and then we make the mistake. So it says which symbol correctly compares the fractions. Equal is 4 6 greater than 5 8 or is 4 6 less than 5 8. Sometimes we want to draw and I would, I really don't necessarily think that that's a great strategy. So if I have 4 6 and I want to cut this, again, my drawing's not great. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and I have 5 8. One, two, three, four. Oh, guys, they look really equal because my drawings aren't perfect. So in this case, I'm going to try another strategy that will definitely tell me whether or not they are equal or one is bigger than the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make like denominators. So if I have four, six, and five, eights, six and eights don't have the same denominator and they're not cut at the same amount. So I'm going to change them so that they do. So if I'm thinking about the, the multiples of six, I have six, 12, 18, oh, I see 24. I can change six to be a 24, and I can change eights to be a 24. So I'm gonna change four six to be now cut into 24. So I know six times three got me to that 24. So I'm gonna do my numerator times three, which gets me 12 24 ths And now I'm gonna do the same for five eights. I know eight times three got me to my denominator of 24. So I'm gonna do five times three, which gets me 15. And now I can clearly see which one is bigger than the other. If I have 12 24 or 15 24 then I can see, oh, I did this wrong, six times four. Oh, guys, I hope that you knew I did this wrong. And four times four is 16. Guys, see how you have to be really careful. So if I have six times four got me to 24, four times four got me to 16. So actually, this one ends up being 16 is bigger than 15 in this um, for this fraction. So then I can see that this fraction is greater than 5 eighths. Make sure you double check what you're doing because I easily made a little mistake there by multiplying by the wrong number and I would have gotten the problem wrong. All right, let's try this one. Pause the video and then you can check to see when you're done. All right, so it says 5, 6, and 9 tenths. I'm going to do the same thing again um, where I am going to not draw them because that's not a great um, strategy and I'm going to change them to have equivalent or like I'm going to make equivalent fractions because they have like denominators. So if I'm thinking of 6 and 10, well, I know that multiples of 10 are 10, 20. Well, look, I can make a 10 into a 30, and I know I can make a 6 into a 30. So if I'm making my 10 into a 30, my denominator is 30. My top, my numerator, 9 times 3, is 27. So my new fraction is 27 thirtieths. Over here, I know that 6 times 5 gets me the 30, and I know 5 times 5 is 25. So then in this case, I'm comparing 25 thirtieths and 27 thirtieths. I know that 27 thirtieths is greater, so I know that 9 tenths is greater. 
So I would write it like that because I have three. It says five six is less than nine tenths. If you um, are a little bit confused about this, I highly suggest doing comparing fractions on Study Island. Now we're going to add and subtract fractions, but we're going to keep it with like denominators. So again, I rewrite my problem. So I have seven and three eighths, and I'm going to add four wholes and three eighths. These are two mixed numbers. Remember, a mixed number is a combination of a whole number and a fraction. Now I can easily add these because I'm seeing that I have um, like denominators. So if I have an eighth, I can add an eighth. I can add eighths and eighths together. So I have three eighths plus three eighths. That gets me six eighths. And then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 7 plus 4 is 11, and I get 11 and 6 eighths. Now, technically, yes, this is correct, but I'm hoping some of us see that we can simplify this, and that if I have 6 eighths, I can simplify 6 eighths um, by dividing both of these by 2, because 2 is a common factor, and that means that I have 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and I can't forget my whole number, and my final answer would be 11 and 3 fourths. So let's try this one, and I want you and our subtracting. Um, to see how you would solve this. This one says 2 minus 3 fourths. So this one I just have a whole number 2 and I want to take away 3 fourths from it. Now this one's tricky because if I have two pretzel rods and I want to take away 3 fourths, I kind of can't because my pretzel rods are in whole things. So I'm hoping that we remember that we can decide to either cut both of them up or one of them up. So I need to instead, I can't subtract this, I have two. If this is cut into fourths, I have three fourths. I'm going to take one of these, and I'm going to cut one of my pretzel rods. I'm going to keep one whole, and I'm going to have one, two, three, four fourths of another one. I still have two pretzel rods. It's just that I kept one whole, and I cut up the other into four fourths. Now I can easily subtract one minus one and four fourths minus three fourths. Four fourths minus three fourths is one fourth. One whole minus nothing is one, and I get one and one fourth. All right, so let's try um, one more. Right here, we're going to move to decomposing fractions, which is something that you all definitely can do, but we haven't really seen a lot before. Um, this says John, first of all, decomposing means to break apart something, so that's kind of what we're doing. Um, we're applying what we know about fractions to solve these problems. So this says John played soccer with his friends on five days last week. He played for a total of three and two-fifths hours, which equation shows how many hours John could have played soccer. And then I'm like, ah, there's a lot of different things happening here. They're telling me that A, if I add up all of these, I get three and two-fifths. I'm going to look and see which one is true, because I know that total, he played three and two-fifths. So let's check. If I have one-fifth plus one-fifth, that's two-fifths. And then I have one, two, three holes. Oh, I do get three and two-fifths. So, so far I'm going to put that one's a maybe. Now let me try B. This one says two-fifths plus two-fifths. Well, that's four-fifths. One, two, three. That's three and four-fifths, and that is not what I want because I want my answer to be three and two-fifths. So it is not B. Let's try C. This says one-fifth plus one-fifth. That's two-fifths. And then plus another two-fifths. That would be four-fifths. And then I have one hole and two holes. And that would give me two and four-fifths. That's, that's wrong because I need three holes. And then I'll try D. Two-fifths plus two-fifths plus two-fifths, that's six-fifths, and I get one hole plus one hole, and that's two and six-fifths, which is weird because I see that six-fifths is an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this um, in six-fifths. I can pull out one five-fifths, and I have one-fifth left over. So total, I would get three and one-fifth, which is still not right because I need three and two-fifths. So for this one, the only one that works would have been A. Again, all we're doing when we decompose fractions is we're seeing which of these equations actually equals what we need. So if I have three and two fifths, what they're saying is for five days, on day one he did one fifth, um, he played for one fifth hours, day two he played for one fifth hours, day three one full hour, day four one full hour, and day five one full hour. We're adding up all the days that he worked um, and played soccer to get three and two fifths. So I'm going to pause and drive this one and press play when you're ready. All right, Mr. Schrader built a model train track on five days last week. So remember, this would be day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. He built a total of three and five twelfths. And I'm seeing that all of these say that the equations equal three and five twelfths. But based on my previous one, I know that some of them are incorrect. 
It says which equation shows how many feet of the model train track Mr. Schrader could have built on each day. So we're going to check this. So I'm going to first add up my fractions. 2 twelfths plus 3 twelfths plus 5 twelfths. Let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That equals 10 twelfths. And then they have one, two holes. 2 and 10 twelfths does not match 3 and 5 twelfths. So that one's incorrect. Now let's try this one. 5 twelfths plus 5 twelfths plus 5 twelfths. That's 15 twelfths. And then I have one hole and I have two holes. So I have 2 and 15 twelfths, which is kind of tricky because 15 twelfths is improper. So I'm going to have to um, make this improper into a proper fraction. So I'm pulling out how many 12 twelfths can I pull out of 15 twelfths. I know I can pull out one 12 twelfth. And then I have 13, 14, 15. I have three twelfths left over. And I need to add my original two. And I would get three and three twelfths, which mm, that one does not work either. Now let's try this one. This one says 5 twelfths plus 5 twelfths. That's 10 twelfths. I'm going to put this over here, 10 twelfths. Hang on. And then I'm going to add 1, 2, 3 holes and 10 twelfths. That one does not work. Let's try this one. 2 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. That's 5 twelfths. And then I have 1, 2, 3 holes and 5 twelfths. Look at that one matches what I need, so I know D is my answer. Um, I highly suggest trying this one on Study Island, the decomposing fractions. Last we're going to do is multiplying fractions, which looks different depending on the type of problem you have. So let's read this one. If you want to pause it and try it and press play, go for it. In Mr. Smith's class, two-fifths of the students say their favorite subject is science. So I have two-fifths of the students. So um, there are 25 kids in the class how many students say their favorite subject is science? So I know that of the 25 students, two-fifths of them think um, science is their favorite. So I'm going to draw this just so I can get a visual. Here's his class, and he has 25 kids in the class. Then it says two out of five of the students say their favorite subject is science. So I'm going to cut this into fifths, one, two, three, four, five. And I know that this one and this one, two of them love science. And that's what I want to know is I want to know how many, how many here actually really like science. I'm assuming the other three are like reading or writing or math or something else. So we want to figure this out. If I'm looking at this, I see that my 25 is hugging the whole bar. So I'm going to take my 25 and split it evenly into five groups. 25 divided by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 5. So each group gets 5 inside of it. But look. Um, that is not the actual answer because their science has two of them together, two of the fifths. So then I can see that 5 plus 5 equals 10. So my answer for this one would be C. All right, let's try one more. I want you to pause it and see what you would do for this problem. It says Sharon's mother is making seven salads. In each salad, she puts one-fourth of a cup of diced ham. How many cups of diced ham does she put in the seven salads? Ah! Sometimes I really, if I'm kind of confused, I need to visualize like we do in reading, and I'm going to draw this. So she's making seven salads. One salad, two salads, three salads, four salads, five salads, six salads. There's the salads. In each one, she's putting a fourth cup of diced ham. So in this salad, she's getting a fourth cup ham, a fourth cup, a fourth cup, a fourth cup, a fourth cup, one fourth cup, and a fourth cup. And they want to know how many cups does she put in all of the salads. I want to know how many are in here. Well, let's think. I feel like I just need to add all these up. One-fourths, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, five-fourths, six-fourths, seven-fourths in each one. I actually see that seven-fourths is right here, um, so that's going to be the answer. Um, but I do also recognize that this is an improper fraction. So if I tried it and I didn't see seven-fourths, I could think maybe I need to make it a mixed number. So in seven-fourths, I'm pulling out how many four-fourths. So there's one four-fourths. I can't pull out two because that would be eight fourths. So I have four fourths and I would have three fourths left over. That's seven. So I would get one whole and three fourths if I needed to make that into a mixed number. Um, all right, so here's what you're going to do. I suggest going to, if you have Study Island, going to Study Island and picking two to do to, to practice. So either adding fractions is an option. Decomposing fractions was the one where we were like one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus two plus three, and we were trying to get the answer. That's a really good one to try. Equivalent fractions is a good one, as is multiplying fractions. I would say the two, um, I'm actually going to add one. I believe comparing fractions is another one. If I had to pick three that I think we probably need the most practice on, it would be decomposing, 
multiplying and comparing fractions. So if I were to go to Study Island, you go to fourth grade um, and you click math, and then I would scroll down here, see where it says not fractions, and then the ones to choose that I think are probably the best ones for us that we maybe struggle with the most are comparing fractions, decomposing fractions, um, and then there's two multiplying fractions. There's one that's like a level one. Level two would be a challenge, multiplying um, word problems, but maybe that pick two of those to do to practice, and you could do game mode, and then see how you do after that. All right, hopefully this was a helpful review. Let us know if you have any questions.